Okay, welcome everyone to um, Living Your Best Life, our webinar series. Um, just to let everyone know that I will be recording um, this session and I will be then putting it on my uh, YouTube channel so that people who missed the session can watch it at a later date. Um, so thank you all for those who have joined on time. There, there will be people joining as we go along and I will just um, add them to the session. So. In terms of this uh, webinar series, so it's gonna run for the next seven weeks. Um, and my goal and aim is that, you know, if you found it useful and you do wanna come back for the next week, that you invite someone else to come along with you so that I can reach as many people um, with these topics that can hopefully help to shape and build people's lives. So let me just get my clicker to work, here we go. So just a bit of background, um, around how this came about. So normally when I do my um, webinars, I normally have a debrief um, with an individual who normally provides like a lot of insight into um, things that I could add to it or maybe, and also talks about what she got from the webinar itself. And when we was having a discussion after one of my webinars, she was saying that there is so much content in the webinars that I'm normally delivering when it's like an hour long or an hour and a half long, that she said you could actually take little bits from that and actually break that up and give people like an opportunity to kind of discuss and explore some of those topics because there's so much um, richness that comes out of the webinars. And that's what led me to do this um, idea of um, living your best life. And so what I wanted to do was focus on seven different areas over seven different weeks and how it will basically work is that um, you get an opportunity to kind of go over some tools or go over some um, fundamental tools, but then we have an opportunity and a chance to kind of have a discussion around those topics where there's a different type of learning that takes place. So that's basically going to be the concept over these um, next seven weeks. Um, and I'm hoping that you will get a lot from it. So. Just to touch over in terms of um, who I am and what I do. So I am the founder of Edifying Answers. For those of you who don't know, um, Edifying Answers is a training consultancy that aims to unlock insight through my transformational workshops and webinars. Um, so this is uh, one of the free ones that I'm doing over these next second, seven weeks. Um, and this is about living your best life. So we're just gonna get straight into it. and. Mm -hmm. In terms of living your best life, in terms of if we really want to do that, one of the fundamental things that we have to do in order to be free is to remove the mask. Mm. And the mask for everyone will be something different. It will have a different shape. It will have a different uh, value. There will be different reasons to why the mask is there. It will be different people who you put the mask on when you're around but we all have different masks that we do need to remove. And when I'm talking about the mask, I'm referring to the shield that people live behind to protect themselves, to hide how they really feel, or to conceal their emotions. And so often, it, it, whether it be a partner, children, parents, a boss, colleague, a friend, there's always masks that we put up to protect ourselves, to keep ourselves safe. And what happens with that over time is that sometimes it can get to the point where you don't know the difference between the mask and who you are. And that can create its own set of problems. And one of the things about wearing masks is that in the beginning, it may seem beneficial, but in the long run, it becomes very problematic. And one of the reasons for that is because, as you can see in the picture, you've got the comforting lies that everyone is going to, but the unpleasant truths, no one's going there. And that's kind of what happens with the mask. Sometimes we don't want to know the unpleasant truth. We don't want to accept the reality of the situation. Sometimes it's difficult to accept that if you be who you are, someone may not like you for that. And so we compromise and we allow for things to just happen to us instead of taking control of our own lives. And this can cause the individual over time to experience varying degrees of mental conflict 
and anguish as cognitive dissonance occurs. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult when eventually you get to a place when you're looking in the mirror and you don't know who that is that's staring you in the reflection. Or when you walk away from a situation and you realize that, you, you know, you didn't speak your truth or you compromised on your values and morals because of this particular individual or because you was afraid that you, you know, someone may look at you differently, you didn't share how you really feel in the situation. And so it's, it's really important that we learn to remove these masks because every single one of us was born original and we don't want to die a copy. You don't want to die being what someone else wants you to be, which doesn't make you happy. And so it's really important that if, we, if you want to live your best life, then you have to be willing to upset those who don't value you and who you are. And so I want us to look a bit more on cognitive dissonance because this, which is basically a mental conflict. And it's really important that we, we, we kind of understand how powerful this thing can be and what damage it can cause if we don't contain it. And so it's basically about values versus behaviors. And so in any given situation and in any of your relationships, what are the values that you hold? What are the key foundational tools? What are the things that you hold dear to you? Whether it is, you know, um, respecting other people, whether it is, you know, speaking the truth and not lying, whether it is being authentic to yourself, whether it is doing those things that make you feel happy and those things that align with what you feel as being right and a good individual versus the behaviors, the actual things that you end up doing. And though these two can often clash with one another, depending on the situation, the circumstance and the individual who's at hand. And so in the field of psychology, cognitive dissonance occurs when a person holds two or more contradictory beliefs, ideas, or values, and participates in an action that goes against one of these three and experiences psychological stress because of that. And so it's really important that we are able to, to make wise choices and make those choices based on our values and not on what someone else expects of us. Because in the long run, it will come back to bite you and it will have an impact on your health and your well-being and your self-esteem. And so it's interesting because it says beliefs, ideas, and values. And so beliefs are very interesting because beliefs are actually formed between the ages of six and eight. If you look at what all the experts say around it, they say that the majority of our beliefs are formed between the ages of six and eight. And so what that means is that sometimes the beliefs that we hold, which may have and often is influenced by our parents or whoever it is who brings us up, sometimes as we get older, we're still holding on to outdated values and beliefs that are outdated. And sometimes we need to upgrade those beliefs because by holding on to those beliefs, they then can cause us to wear masks that you know, we shouldn't be wearing in our adult life. And the values that you hold as well, you know, as, as Martin Luther King said, it's always the right time to do what is right. And if you're going to um, lose some people along the way for you upholding and standing by your values, then that's something that, I mean, everyone needs to make that choice, but that's something that I'm willing to do. Because if I'm going against my values and I'm feeling hurt and I'm feeling low and I don't feel confident in myself, then what's it all about? And so I think it's really important that we um, are aware of the masks that we wear and what is the impact it's having on us? Wearing that mask, how does that line up with your values? And your values, how are they lining up with your behaviors? If you can reflect over your day at the, at the end of, at the, in the night, at the end of the day, and be happy with what's taken place and how you've been, then that's a great thing. But if you're constantly going against your values, 
it will grate away at your confidence and your self-esteem. And it will be very difficult to live your best life. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to split us into um, groups. And what I want us to do is in your subgroups, I want you to have a conversation around these points. So in group one, you're going to be talking about removing the mask. And what does that mean to you? How has that been in your life? Have you had experience of removing the mask? How did it feel? What was going on for you? You know, what did you grow through that change? For group two, it's, it's about cognitive dissonance, mental conflict. How does your values and your behaviors line up when there's a difficult situation? What choice do you make? And, and, and how, how has it gone? How, what has your experience been in terms of dealing with and addressing that? And then um, for the third group, in terms of values and behaviors, you know, have a discussion around values. What are your key values? Are you aware of them? And how do they drive and influence your behavior? And so in your groups, um, so I'm going to put you into groups now. Uh, give me a second. There you go, breakout rooms. So we want three rooms. Okay, so I'm gonna open the rooms. I'm gonna click for you to join.